Heartland virus disease. Uh, most of you probably never heard of this newly identified Stiebel virus that was detected in two Missouri farmers in 2009. However, last week in a notes from the field in the CDC publication, the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report, the MMWR, authors reveal that six additional cases of Heartland virus disease were identified during 2012 and 2013. Joining me on the phone to learn more about Heartland virus disease is Dr. Daniel Pastula. Dr. Pastula is an EIS officer and neurologist with the CDC's Arboviral Diseases Branch, and he's also one of the authors of the MMWR publication. Good afternoon, Dr. Pastula. Thanks for taking the time to help us understand more about this disease. Sure, anytime. Great. Well, let's go ahead and just start with the basics. Um, sure. What is Heartland virus and what is Heartland virus disease? Yeah, so um, you, I think, had mentioned it in your introduction that uh, Heartland virus, it's a newly discovered uh, virus um, that was discovered in the two Missouri farmers uh, reported in 2012, um, and it's in a, a family of viruses that we call fleboviruses. And so how did these... There was two people in 2009, I believe I read, yeah, from Missouri, correct. and then and six additional, five from Missouri and one from Tennessee. So these eight individuals, how do you believe they contracted this new virus? Yeah, so I think right now we haven't proven how they got this new virus. However, um, the majority of them did um, uh, experience uh, tick bites uh, prior to their um, illness onset, as well as there had been another study to suggest that um, Heartland virus was recovered in uh, the Lone Star tick. Uh, however, we haven't um, proven that ticks necessarily uh, transmit the disease to humans, but we think that they might. Okay, very good. And um, so these eight individuals, what kind of symptoms do they experience? Yeah, so um, most experienced fever, fatigue, headaches, um, muscle aches, joint aches, decreased appetite, and nausea. Uh, additionally, in their laboratory values from their blood, they had low um, platelets or um, uh, cells that help uh, blood clot, as well as low numbers of white blood cells or cells that fight infection. So did they have bleeding issues at all? Do you know? Um, that is, uh, I do not believe so. Okay. I was just asking because of the low, low platelet count. Yeah, um, no, that's certainly a risk with low platelets, but um, I don't think we have that data currently. Okay. We're, now, get into a little bit more about the epidemiology. Geographically, uh, seven out of the eight cases were from Missouri. All eight cases were in men greater than 50 years of age. Is there anything that you and your colleagues take out of that? Is there? Yeah. So, so let me kind of uh, break that into two questions. First, the Missouri. Why sure. are you know most cases are from Missouri? So, you know, we found the most cases in Missouri mainly because one of our studies is actually set up in Missouri. Because the first two cases were found in Missouri, we worked with the Missouri uh, Department of Health and Senior Services to basically have a study there looking for cases because that's where the initial cases were found. Um, right. We're also working with other state health departments to look for cases outside Missouri. So that kind of goes to why Missouri is mainly because we designed one of our studies there. Um, and and, and, and get, the fact that – yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. And to get to your um, men greater than 50, I, I would say since there are only been eight cases ever described, I don't think we have enough information to say what groups may or may not be at risk with only eight cases. Um, older men may be at increased risk, but with so few cases, I don't think we really know. Um, so hopefully the studies that are currently ongoing will help us figure this out more. But in general, I think it is a good idea for everyone uh, to try to prevent tick bites, not just older sure. men. And, and, and I understand that one of these uh, gentlemen died, but he had some underlying uh, medical issues. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Okay. Um, so like all tick-borne diseases, 
there has to be some exposure to the outdoors. Um, was that the case with these eight patients? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I don't know offhand the first two patients because I wasn't the initial author on that, but in terms of the six patients that we identified, um, all of them reported spending several hours uh, per day outside, either working, walking, doing yard work, hunting, or hiking. Okay. And um, you, the CDC is diagnosed in Heartland virus, um, so you guys must have uh, developed some, some kind of diagnostic test. Um, how is the CDC diagnosing the Heartland virus? Yeah, so right now our tests are kind of under a study protocol, the, the studies that we're uh, doing right now. But basically we look for the virus as well as we look for uh, antibodies to the virus. Okay. And uh, to close, th close things out, um, I'm just going to ask you, is, is there any treatment for Heartland virus disease? And what's the best way to prevent this uh, new uh, feeble virus? Yeah, I think, so in terms of treatment, similar to a lot of other viruses, there's no treatment specifically for viruses. It's, you can't use antibiotics um, for viruses. So, um, so, in, there's, so there are no specific treatments and there are no vaccines at this time for Heartland virus. Uh, however, if you should always consult with your doctor if you're feeling unwell, as they might be able to do stuff to help with your symptoms. In terms of preventing Heartland virus disease, um, again, we haven't proven it, but we think it might be transmitted by ticks. So really, um, it's a good idea to prevent tick bites, not just for this disease, but other tick-borne diseases in general. Correct. So things that people can do to prevent tick bites are, one, wearing insect repellent when outdoors, two, wearing long sleeves and pants if feasible, three, avoid heavily wooded or bushy areas, and four, uh, performing tick checks after returning from being outside. All right, well, very good. Well, I've been talking to Dr. Daniel Pastula with the CDC um, about Heartland virus disease. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pastula, for your time and your expertise. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, have a good day.